everyone, and welcome to the 6-5 Summit, AI Unleashed. I am thrilled to be joined today by Shashi Apudahe, President of Product Engineering and AI at Zendesk, for the collaboration track opening keynote on transforming customer and employee service through AI. Shashi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me here. So just a year ago, many organizations were still cautiously experimenting with AI. And today, AI is no longer a novelty. It's become a critical force reshaping how businesses serve both customers and employees. And AI is evolving from a simple assistance to intelligent problem solving. So. Let's dive right in. What are the biggest challenges you've seen recently in how AI is used in customer and employee services? Now, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is probably the biggest change we have seen in humanity's history since the Industrial Revolution and how work is going to get done. And AI has gone from being, you know, at the periphery of the discussions we're having and like kind of as a helper to being at the very center of the customer and employee service discourse. Instead of starting with human agents, for example, companies are now starting to ask the question, what if the primary sol solver, the, pri the, the primary way to solve service problems are actually going to be AI agents? And only when that fails, is it going to go to human agents? And that is a massive shift because you have to go in and change the entire workflow you have, to, you have to go and change the entire reporting. You have to go in and change everything. You have been, can I rethink from the beginning everything you've been doing all along the way? Companies that have embraced this approach are seeing very high automation rates. 80 plus percent of service uh, cases can now be solved by AI. From you know 10 to 20 percent, just like six months ago. So the the pace of change has been extremely rapid, and in this new world. Humans will still have a role, but now they are freed up to work on the hardest problems and to work on the situations that are most complex and when the user, the customer needs the most empathy. So this is a really big change because it's not an easy change. It requires an entire transformation of the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That it's you know there is a lot of fear around that people are going to lose jobs and all of that. And there you know the reality is there may be some of that, but freeing people up to do the more meaningful work is really so nice. And so I'd love to hear from you kind of what makes Zendesk's AI approach fundamentally different from other AI applications in customer service? It's a really good question. So for, for us, we start with the user who has a problem. You know, when someone calls in with a, with a, with a support case or, uh, or with a ticket, uh, they are already in a not great uh, frame of mind. Uh, they have a problem, they need it solved. And what do they care about? They care that the problem is solved quickly, they care that it's solved correctly, and, that they're, and they care that they're treated courteously, right? Those are the three things they're looking for. So we have centered everything we're doing, both for the humans and for AI agents, around those three goals. How can we solve the problem quickly? How can we solve it accurately? And how can the end user have the best possible experience? And because we focus exclusively on service and we're not trying to sell something else, you know, we're not attached to some other platform, we believe we can optimize our approach to the highest level possible for each company that we work with. And focus on service for us means being singularly obsessed about the type of problems your customers have, how to resolve quickly, and at the lowest cost possible for you. Now we have over 100,000 customers, which means we are globally present, we are present across every vertical. So we have a ton of expertise across use cases, across verticals, and across how to get customers to the best outcomes possible. All of those lessons are being brought to our AI and humans working together. So that's really what separates Zendesk from everyone else, is the obsession with service, and it's the obsession with those three goals. Solve accurately, solve quickly, and provide the best experience possible while doing so. And so while you're doing that, I mean, I mentioned a little bit that it really allows humans to be good at what they're really good at and kind of take away some of that 
more tedious work, the, the, the work that they don't actually want to do. How do you see AI enhancing the capabilities of human agents rather than replacing them? Absolutely. So, you know, if the, the job of a human agent so on, on the flip side of, a, of an upset customer is a human agent who has to absorb all that, uh, all that negativity, shall we say, right? And if you ask yourself what frustrates the consumer in the end, it's that uh, they had a long time to wait, uh, that when they call an agent, the agent actually doesn't know anything about the background. Uh, they have to kind of go through like a whole data entry process. Uh, and then when the agent is not able to solve it, passes it to another agent, they have to restart from the beginning, right? So like a, it's not unusual for a typical customer service conversation to be, you know, if you're, if you're having a live conversation, it can easily go into 20, 30 minutes. And if you're, if you're trying to solve it over uh, email or text, it can, you know, it can go into days or weeks. So for us, it's all about how do we make that agent as knowledgeable as they can be and take away all their drudgery. So drudgery is pulling data from different systems. Drudgery is drafting a form, you know, response that they would have they could have like it could have been generated by an AI, right? Drudgery is repeating like the same set of tasks over and over again. Mm -hmm. So our vision of our co-pilot is take away the drudgery so that the agent can focus on providing the best possible experience to the end customer and they can focus their attention on solving the hardest problems, problems that go outside of what could be automated. So we're kind of focusing on those two things at the moment. And over time, we expect that even these co-pilots will become you know, more and more intelligent. The co-pilots themselves will learn from what humans are doing and start to take on more and more of these tasks so that even the, you know, even the uh, kind of lowest LTV customer, the lowest lifetime value customer can call and get a, get a live agent when they have a very hard problem. Do you see with AI that the things that we're optimizing for in customer service might change a little bit. Like we've always optimized for time for, to resolution and with AI allowing for humans to really kind of get in into those more meaningful conversations where people can really feel heard and their problems can be solved. Do you see those things that people are optimizing for changing at all over time? Absolutely. So, you know, before one can have meaningful conversations, you have to solve the problem. Right. And so I, I think too often, and there's been a kind of a long um, uh, uh, thread of conversations over the years about how uh, support teams need to extend themselves and go into cross sell, upsell, and other ways of generating revenue. But the, the basics have to be in place. And the basics that have to be in place is I, as a consumer, should be able to call a company or reach out to a company any time of day, right? Independent of it's a holiday, if it's late at night, and get a resolution as quickly as possible. And what's more, over time, what we're going to see have happened is that users are not even reaching out to companies anymore. They're going to tell their co-pilot, they're going to tell you know, their AI agent to go deal with these problems, right? So that's the world that we're moving to. So the only time when you have the human to human interaction is when all else has failed, right? When you've asked your agent to call the company agent and the problem didn't get solved, or you interacted with the AI agent or the company and the problem didn't get solved. So by the time you're reaching out and reaching to a human, you are already in the hardest kind of problem category, so to speak. So what we see ourselves as doing at the moment is to ensure that everything that can be solved very quickly, live in the middle of the night, you know, on a weekend, all of that is done. So we, we expand the time and the quality of uh, resolutions that people can get as, uh, as reliably as possible and do so very quickly. And that's what AI agents do very well. Mm -hmm. then, the, then there's a question of the experience that the, the consumer has with the human agent. And I think that is so much easier to do when the human agent is not harassed by a bunch of small stuff, you know, like responding to a whole bunch of small stuff all day. So I think some of it will just happen naturally as a consequence of this automation, mm -hmm. right? Some of this will just happen naturally because now they have more time. You know, it's like a, it's like a doctor who is not freed up because they don't have to do all the paperwork so they can actually sit and listen to the patient and like solve their problem into it. 
So I really believe, we really believe this is going to be a massive change and dramatically improve the quality of experience that consumers have in companies. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about the experience for the, the customer, and of course that's really important, but this also really affects the experience of the human agents. And historically that's been a problem, but there's a lot of turnover in these contact centers that it's a, it can be a grueling job. So talk to me a little bit about how this really helps to, for turnover for companies, for giving them the ability to kind of manage their workforce a little bit better with, with these AI agents who don't get tired. They don't need days off. They don't get sick. They don't, you know, they're, they're, how does that help their workforce? A great, really good question. So, uh, you know, I think we've all had the experience of where, uh, uh, we've you know we've called in and we you know we we wanted a problem solved quickly and it just wasn't getting done right so a lot of that uh, frustration whether expressed or not expressed passes on to these agents these are the toughest jobs in the industry right these are um, these are uh, not jobs that people come out of college saying you know like this is what I really want to go right want to go do and. The, the, it requires a very special kind of person uh, to do them day in, day in and day out. There's a lot of burnout in the industry, there's a lot of turnover. Uh, many people see these jobs as, you know, a, a, as a road to something else, right? Like they'll go into customer success or over time into sales and other things which are even more lucrative. So making the experience of these agents better is a massive priority for, for us and for the companies because at the end of the day, you know, people don't remember the best experience they had. They always remember the worst experience they had, yes. right? That's what they associate a brand with. Mm -hmm. And then these days, you know, they'll take that experience and then go share it on TikTok or social media or whatever, right? So it's not like it's it's isolated. So if you want to optimize for, if you want to optimize for or you want the, the best experience people have and make sure that the worst is not terrible, then we have to start with the agents because they're human beings too and they have good days and bad days, right? So taking away the drudgery, taking away the repetitive tasks, taking away the, you know, the stuff that makes their life uh, not, you know, uh, the, the job's not enjoyable. I think that's where it's at. A lot of people who go into these roles generally like people and they like to serve people. That's why they took the role, right? So freeing them up, to serve them in a way that's not rushed. I mean, you, you've been in this industry, right? Like so much of stuff is managed for, for a long time, like so much of the stuff is managed by how many calls you take in a day. Mm -hmm. If you if you manage by how many calls you take in a day, on the other side of it is a rushed consumer and you, uh, you don't feel that great about having rushed them through. Right. So maybe we can give people all the time they need to solve the problem because all the, you know, the, the, boring drudgery stuff has been taken over by AI agents. And so the problems that you're dealing with generally require intellect, they require empathy, they require listening, they require a good conversation. And that could make the job a lot more fulfilling because you, you're leaving behind someone who's very happy about the experience they have with you. Yeah, and certainly less turnover means more money for the company because those are expensive things, you know, that, that kind of turnover can be very expensive for companies, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think anybody like sets these things up saying we're going to, you know, this is all about money and we'll just make our customers have a bad experience, right? I mean, we have to keep improving CSAT because we all know if you have a good CSAT, then you have, you know, a good net promoter score. If you have good net promoter score, you have better lifetime value. I think that that kind of the equation is well understood, but you know, service organizations are always under cost pressure. This is not a new thing. It's always been like this. Yeah. And because they're always under cost pressure, there's a great way to take that pressure off today, which is to use AI agents to do a bulk of the work and to do it in a way where you can simultaneously improve all these metrics. See, that's actually the beauty of this. You can simultaneously increase the coverage time. You can increase CSAT. You can increase, you know, like average handling time, like, you know, agents, yeah, agents can just do the job right away. They don't have to go have lunch breaks, this, that, and the other. So you can simultaneously improve all of these things and then leave the hardest problem for the human agents to come back themselves. 
So, Sashi, if you had one bold prediction of where you see a, the biggest change in this industry over the next five years, what would it be? I think the biggest change will be a bit of a back to the future, which is as a user, you'll be able to get a live human agent whenever you want. And the reason is because you have so much confidence in the AI that you'll actually prefer a solution from them first. And only when in those very exceptional cases, can you not solve the problem, you'll go talk to human agent and you'll no longer have this, like, you know, you submit a form and you wait for three days to get a response kind of thing anymore. So mm -hmm. I actually think we're entering the golden era of service where anytime you have a problem, it will either get solved very, very quickly by an AI agent or you'll get a live human agent on the other side of it. And you'll have that solved very quickly now by a human agent. So that's my bold prediction. There are many other predictions we can make, but I look forward to that time. Well, that's awesome. And that's a great way to wrap this up. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you all for watching for this collaboration track opening keynote at the 6.5 Summit. Stay connected with us on social and explore more conversations at 65media.com slash summit. On behalf of the 6.5 Media, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you for having me. Thank you.